wanted to, so the topic this morning is AngelCon. Uh, it's a program we started seven years ago. And the idea there was to try and see if they were locally, if there were potential investors who'd never before invested in startups, but had an interest. And could we meet once a month, do some training? Uh, we have speakers who come in from all over, mostly from Silicon Valley, who share their expertise on how to um, uh, select winning startups for a potential for an investment that might have a high potential of return. Um, we set up a fund every year, a new fund, an LLC. Each investor who has interest in learning uh, how to invest in startups puts in $6,500 into the fund to purchase one unit. We, um, well, here's, yeah, here's more details. It's, uh, the fund is a single purpose vehicle, which means an SPV, which means we will invest in just one startup. So all the investors pull their money into the fund. We raise a minimum of $100,000. That amount of money gets invested in one startup. Uh, we meet every month, September through April, uh, April, May. And come January, startups start applying to be considered for the investment. So the investors will review those startups and pick their top 12 and then their top six. And the top six get to pitch at a live event. It's very much like a Shark Tank style event. And our investor group will vote for the winning startup and invest the $100,000 in one startup. Lots of variations on this. Sometimes we raise more money, more than one startup gets money. The investors choose. They, they decide what they want to do with their pot of money. Um, did I forget anything? That, that's the, kind of the gist of it. Super fun program. Uh, we have amazing investors that join every year. Some people have participated for seven years running. Uh, we have lots of new investors participating again this year for Fund 8. So if anyone here has any interest in getting involved, uh, feel free to contact us. Feel free to, we'll share information on how you can participate. So here are the kind of the results of what's happened over the last seven years. Um, the only startup that we've lost is startup number one, fun one, Ulzi. Um, that one dissolved very fast after, after the investment. Uh, lots of reasons why, I won't go into the details. But overall, our companies are doing well. They're all still um, still going. They're all still growing. Uh, none of them, uh, they're all doing well. So very interested to see, oh, except for one, sorry, one more, right. So 2018 and 2023, we've lost two, sorry. We have lost two. Um, however, the investment in Ride did come back to the investor group. So that money was not lost. Um, yeah, I'm not going to go through all the numbers, but we've, we've had good results so far. And we're waiting for a big first return on investment, which means uh, that that's the day when one of those startups gets either acquired by a larger corporation, or maybe one of them will one day go public. We'll have an IPO, um, but we'll see. It, on average, it takes five to seven years to actually see an exit. So we're on the cusp of some of, some of this potentially happening. We'll see. Uh, last year, we had 18 startups apply, uh, which is kind of on the low, low end of what we've seen in the past, but the quality was pretty high, so that was good. We had 21 investors involved. We raised $215,000, and we had a huge event. More than 200 people attended. Uh, it, was, it was super fun at Slow Brew, um, and we'll do it again next year. Uh, so to be able to invest in Fund 8, uh, we'll go over the qualifications. So you do have to be an accredited investor. Uh, either you have, yeah, it is a million, yeah, a net worth uh, or a joint net worth with your spouse, your partner of a million dollars or more, and that does not include your the value of your primary residence. Or uh, you earn $200,000 or more a year, or with your spouse or partner, $300,000 or more per year. So if you qualify with, uh, on those, uh, within those parameters, you can invest in the fund. Uh, and then we'll go into the, the other details, which typically don't apply to what we're doing. Uh, we meet once a month. It's usually the last Friday of every month for a couple, couple hours. Uh, to meet our expert speakers, Q&A. Sometimes we'll organize a no-host lunch. We want to encourage this investor group to get to know each other, 
spend time together, get to know each other. That's that's a big piece of it too, is you get to meet a really interesting group of people. Um, each investor can invest, uh, can purchase a maximum of two units. So the first one is 6,005. $1,500 of that covers admin fees for the life of this fund, which is, you know, once a year we have to pay the franchise tax to the California state. Um, and then we have to pay for our accountants to do our K-1s every year. So we want to make sure we have enough money there to pay for that for 10 years. Um, and so if you buy another unit, the second one is only $5,000. Um, I think I've gone over all of that. And then here's the schedule. We start in September, uh, once a month. These are the topics of the of the um, uh, of the training material. We talk about our investment th thesis. Uh, you know, cap tables, term sheets. We we learn how to do due diligence. The investors actually get to do the due diligence on each of the startups. Uh, and report back to the investor group. So very interactive. You really get to learn how to do this from, from start to finish. It's not just watching the page and like, oh, you know, that one sounds cool. Um, there, there's some really in-depth uh, analysis done for each of these startups. Um, we can keep going. So next year, the, the big event will be on May 1st, 2025. Um, so that in mind again qr code here if you're interested in participating as an investor uh and our first formal investor meeting will be friday september 27th um and with another one uh, and the second the, the october one will be on the 18th uh and now we're gonna get some updates from our winners of 2024 there were two startups um that were invested in uh, Mens and Nextera. Uh, for Mens, we have a video that we're going to share because uh, McCall couldn't be here with us this morning. And so we'll launch the video now. Thanks, Liz. Hi, my name is McCall Brinskelly. I am the founder and CEO of Mens, and I was a contestant in AngelCon 2024 this past year. Uh, we were honored to receive one of the awards for equity funding. And since then, it's been a wild ride. We've been able to bring on uh, branding consultants and marketing consultants in order to um, put together our marketing plan. We're also working with an amazing grant consultant for our application for a grant to the National Institute of Health, uh, which has been amazing. Uh, in addition to that, we've been working towards our product development and are starting to reach our final design, which is very exciting to see. Obviously, I am, I'm super grateful for the work we got to do with the angel investors going through due diligence with them. It was very clear that they were wanting to help us. They were on our side through the whole process. Um, it was really wonderful to get to have that experience in a safe environment prior to now moving into due diligence with other individuals outside of the Central Coast. So that was invaluable being able to work with them. Uh, I say for any investor who's interested in working in AngelCon, I think it's a wonderful experience to meet creative minds um, and to work alongside these wonderful startups who are trying to change the world. So that was a quick update from McCall. Um, and our next update, Penny, Penny Lane, who's here in person. Thanks for being with us. Come on up. I'll give you the, if you want to talk in the box. Right. So what's the latest since uh, May, May 2024? So there's been a lot of movement <laughs> since May. We have kept very busy. I'm very excited to be here. So thank you all for being here to listen to our update. But we ended up participating as exhibitors in a conference down in Southern California attending a conference up in Silicon Valley, and then speaking at a conference again up in Silicon Valley. And so that was the bulk of May after we finished AngelCon. <laughs> and then we moved into a lot of focus on R&D and product development. We have built our prototype end-to-end -end, and we're preparing for field testing now, which is very exciting. And so we'll be getting really tangible results about how our machine learning model translates over to the real world. Outside of that, we did decide to raise another fund. And so raising our pre-seed round two, currently we're raising $800,000 in order to expand our team 
we have had uh, 200,000 committed so far. And so we've taken on our first key hire, which is very exciting. He was the global head of solutions at Edge Impulse, which is the machine learning platform that we use. And he decided that he wanted to take a new path with us. And so we are very grateful. He has over 30 years of experience in artificial intelligence, machine learning, and hardware software products. And so he's the first addition to our growing team. It's very, very exciting. And we have plans to hire a machine learning engineer and we're expanding with software engineers um, on a contract basis. And so there's so much happening on the product development side. I'm really focused on fundraising and securing these beta programs uh, this last month. <laughs> Do you want to tell us how you've been doing? I mean, the yeah. last month has been crazy. Yes. Yes. Um, I've been out of town for work for the last month with my co-founders, Stephanie and Kyleen. And so we were accepted into this incredible fourth wave accelerator program for women that are technology leaders. And so there's... Uh, 17 of us in the cohort, it ranges from pretty much our age range to 75. And so we have such a breadth of experience and companies. It's, you know, from radar <laughs> all the way to uh, formulations and supplements for mental health. And so it's very cool to see how we are working together to make an impact in the world. And so we started in Sacramento at the beginning of this month with the in-person kickoff. It's a 16 week accelerator program. It's, con it's centered around conscious leadership and mentorship opportunities and then business strategy. And so it's kind of everything wrapped into one to propel our business forward. From there, we flew to Portland and we toured two waste facilities to transfer stations, Metro South and Metro Central. We spent about nine hours <laughs> each day there a few hours just sitting on the tipping floor watching the materials come out to observe where we could make an impact there and then we also toured a private hauling company that's interested in our product and so we're very excited to expand up into Oregon it will be a phenomenal reach and from there we flew to San Diego we met with the city of San Diego they do all of their own hauling which is incredible so they have about 200 hauling trucks and they collect for 300,000 residents. And so we are interested in launching a beta program with them. We are anticipating that it will be paid. And so this is a huge opportunity for us to get our foot in the door in Southern California. So we're, we're really trying to cover the West Coast mm -hmm. <laughs> right now, which is very exciting. And then we met with two of our advisors. One is the Battalion Fire Chief of San Diego County. And then one is uh, Jay Dills, who has 20 years of experience at Qualcomm. He's a telecoms expert. And he is also a future key hire, someone we're raising for. We're very excited that he is excited to join our team. And so it's been a lot of development, a lot of movement on every side wow. <laughs> of the wheel. But we're thrilled. That's awesome. And so can, um, and for those of you, I mean, there's a few people here who may be hearing about next year for the first time. Can you give us a, a, the quick elevator pitch on what Absolutely. you're doing? Just to... Absolutely. So Nextera Tech does AI-driven, non-invasive material detection technology. So our first use case is attacking the multi-billion dollar problem of lithium ion batteries in the waste stream. So that means recycling facilities, recycling trucks, waste facilities, scrap facilities, and this happens because the lithium ion battery products we use, like our cell phones, our power tools are thrown in the back of these trucks and then they're punctured or crushed. And that leads to thermal runaway of 500 degrees Celsius or more in a matter of seconds surrounded by paper and plastic. And so our technology attaches to the side of waste hauler vehicles and scans bins at the curb before they're ever collected so that that risk is completely mitigated and those hazardous materials are never entered into the waste stream. Yeah. Any questions from, uh, we have some online? Okay, let's see. Oh, what's that? Oh, not for next year. Okay, perfect. Um, <clears throat> well, Penny, that's super exciting. Thanks for giving us the update. Uh, sounds like the investor team picked the, the right startup. <laughs> There's been lots of progress. Congratulations. And, and getting paid pilots going is it's huge. Already starting to see some potential revenue coming in is, is really fantastic. So, Absolutely. It's so exciting. Great job. Thank yeah, you. We're very proud of you. And if anyone is interested in investing in this fund, please let me know. I'd be happy to talk further. Thanks, Penny. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, so now I'm going to...
Okay, invite Mitch and Kyle to come on up and join me, please. All right, and while we are welcoming our past investors to the stage here, I'm gonna pop in with a few questions that we have online. Uh, first question is from Jeff. Um, he's asking, in past years, the fund has awarded more than one investment. Does this mean there are two separate SPVs formed or can one SPV invest in two different companies? Oh, okay. Yes, that's a great question. So one SPV can invest in more than one company, uh, but once those investments are made, uh, then the fund is, is inactive. Uh, we create a new fund every year. So this, it is the same fund that does invest in two different startups. Okay, yeah. great. And then two questions from Matthew. Um, first question, you've tracked the follow-on capital in aggregate for the startups. Have you tracked the gross aggregate revenue of all the angel con backed startups? We actually have, and we're actually trying to get the, the latest numbers. I looked at the ones actually last night for up until last year. Well, it was, no, I'm gonna give a wrong number. Liz says, no, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I was thinking of all the incubator teams. Yes, 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 yes. Um, I, you know, I think I can safely say that we're it's 30 million or more, uh, knowing some of the activity that's occurred in the last couple of years. Um, so they, they, they have done well. There's been some, uh, some very uh, impressive activity post AngelCon, yes. <laughs> and are we also tracking any sort of new jobs or other statistics like that we for the company? We do track that as well. Uh, and I don't know, do we have the jobs for, not for AngelCon, just the AngelCon winner, winners, but um, we do track that. I can get Matt that answer. We okay, can get great. that answer. And um, then his last question is, why not raise the funds on AngelList? They are max 8% fees. Um, I'm not sure I understand the question. Raise the uh, web site angel list with his funding right. Um, my guess, and correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not, I'm, I don't run the program. Um, but you know, this is kind of a, a local investment team. Um, so the focus is on local investors here, uh, and also getting those investors participated in the actual process of doing the investment. So doing the due diligence, learning. So I think to me, um, and again, my name's Mitch Emerson, sorry, I'm one of the past investors, but one of the values is not just the investment made in the company, but it's also a learning opportunity for people that come to be investors through AngelCon. So I think it's kind of dual purpose, not just to make an investment in the company, but also to help people who are interested in the, learning the background about investing. No, that's exactly right. I mean, that's exactly right. Um, Angel, I mean, I'm guessing you're right. Yes, Angel, this is just let's fundraise for this fund. And, and that's not really truly the goal. Um, more importantly, it's to do the training, uh, share knowledge, share expertise, uh, but also for that group to get to know each other. Uh, and on that note, I'm gonna introduce our, our <laughs> panel. <laughs> and let's imagine, are there more questions on the prior topic from online? No? Oh, we'll get to it. Okay, well, um, so, if you want to take the box, Mitch, so Mitch, uh, please introduce yourself, sure. including your background okay. background, <laughs> and then uh, we'll talk a bit sure. more about the fund. Um, my name is Mitch Emerson, and um, I've been in AngelCon for four years, the past four years. Um, my background is I started, I graduated from Cal Poly in the 90s, worked at Cisco Systems and then Juniper Networks. I started in software development and then moved through, um, when I was at Juniper, I was doing corporate strategy and mergers and acquisitions. Uh, and then I ran my own software company for a while um, and got invested in AngelCon um, through a friend who was doing it. I had done some of my own individual investing in the past, um, but it sounded like an interesting opportunity, again, you know, to learn the process. I'd never invested in um, angel investments or startup companies. Um, so that's kind of how I got interested in it. Thank you. Kyle. Yeah, hi, uh, my name is Kyle Ashby. I, um... I am actually from Goleta, but have a business in Paso Robles. Uh, I've been involved um, in SaaS as well, startup companies as sort of on the uh, marketing side and product development side. So this was really interesting to come and see sort of the whole big broad range of types of ideas that come through Cal Poly. Um, I've been involved in building community around startups in Santa Barbara, Santa Barbara County for, geez, maybe 12 to 15 years now. Uh, worked a lot with Techstars, worked a lot in the early days of Startup Weekend. So I've always been on the 
event side and very raw early stage sweat equity deals and, and things that I've jumped into and helped along the way, um, but never really been in a uh, situation where there's structure to it, which is a really interesting part of this platform is learning the structure and learning what the, the team here is set up. Um, and we can talk about that later, but um, now own and run three co-working spaces from Goleta, or Santa Barbara Goleta and Paso Robles, and we work with the SBDC and Cal Poly in the Paso space to host a few of the teams that come through this program and the, and the incubator program. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for being here. Oh, yes, you can keep the box. Um, so, and so just to clarify, so every year uh, we ask one of our investors to step up as a fund manager, and uh, we try to also appoint an assistant fund manager. And the idea behind that, again, is because we are training these investors to, um, uh, you know, gain the expertise, knowledge to invest in early stage startups, uh, but also how to run the fund itself and how to um, uh, coordinate that piece. So, Mitch, you were the fund manager last year, and Kyle was the assistant fund manager. Oh, no, the no, year before. I was fund manager in 2000 for the fund six. Fund six, yes. so the year before. The year before, That's yeah. right, that's yeah. right. And Kyle, you were the assistant fund manager last year, and you're going to be the fund manager this year. Yeah. So that's just to give you the, the setup here. <laughs> um, so looking back, so I'll start with you, Mitch. Like looking back, um, you've participated every year. Uh, you know, how was it the first year? Why are you still part you know, why are you still involved now? And and what what's um from your personal lens perspective, what are you getting out of this program? Sure. Um, so, you know, I started um, through a friend who was doing it and I thought, oh, that sounds interesting. And actually, I remember the very first year I started, I talked to you, Judy, and you were telling me about the program. And I said, oh, great. I said, so, you know, if the investment ends up, you know, getting a return, does that just get reinvested and we put it back into the community? Because my fun. goal, my goal was, you know, to kind of support local startups. And it's a program that I wish when I was starting my company would have been nice to have um, for learning a lot. Um, and you said, no, you you get the return. And I was like, well, that's kind of cool too. Um, so my original goal is, you know, really to be involved in the local startup community, um, but also to learn more about the angel investing process. It's something that was brand new to me. Um, and the even other- No, I mean, I'm sorry, I'm just going to yeah. carve out a, a Like, even though you were immersed in that world, yeah. uh, I mean, you had your own startup, you fundraised, you got acquired. I mean, you, you actually lived that process, but it's completely different going in at it from the investor side. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it is, it's, it, there's a whole structure to doing due, due diligence. Um, and when I was at Juniper and we did mergers and acquisitions, you know, it was looking at companies for acquisition, but- on a much bigger scale, you know, and here it's very, you know, small, you're getting to talk to the individual people who are starting, you know, basically either right out of school sometimes, or, you know, people who it's their first company. So it's, that's super interesting to me to see that aspect of it. Mm -hmm. And um, the other thing that was interesting from the program from doing due diligence is um, I always felt like you're not just doing due, due diligence to look at, to see if that company is going to be a good investment but you're also able to provide those founders a lot of feedback and guidance and startups. So again, for me, it's a way to kind of give back to that particular community. So, That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Uh, what about you, Kyle? So you also heavily immersed in the startup world, uh, you know, uh, and actually I think we met at the startup weekend in the heyday of startup weekends. And it was like such a thing, <laughs> like uh, there's a lot of traction there. Um, so you, you already had a lot of knowledge and expertise. And so what what did you gain from participating last year? And what's that? Uh, yeah. What... Uh, I think for me, it's always about community um, and expanding my business northward. I wanted to be part of the San Luis Obispo County startup community as well. Um, so that was interesting, especially coming out of COVID to meet a whole different group of people um, via this, you know, investors and also the teams because for a couple of years there, there wasn't a whole lot going on. So it was really good timing for me and always just community, right? It's, um, I think the answer to that previous question is, is if why we're not doing it online is because this community is here and this community will continue to support these startups and the incubator and all the things that are happening around SBDC and Cal Poly. And, and that's just really, to me, is really fun to be a yeah, part Yeah, yeah. I mean, that is what is super cool. There, there's a genuine interest uh, from the investor group to really support uh, the local startup scene to make to keep it thriving and vibrant and and without 
people like you and and this investor group uh that would not be happening uh yeah yeah we wouldn't have i don't think as much activity with the startups so i'm going to dig in a little bit and anyone here honestly just feel free to ask questions anytime um what uh so how has your maybe how have your assumptions maybe Mitch evolved from the first year you participated until now in how you would um, typically select a startup? Uh, has has that evolved over time in how in your decision making process when you look at startups? Yeah, um, so I know at the beginning, you know, you're looking at startups and and founders will talk to you and they'll tell you about what they're doing. You go, oh my gosh, that's a fantastic idea. I'm going to invest some money in you, um, and you want to. Uh, because you think that things are great and you think that the ideas that they have are outstanding. But you really start to learn, particularly through some of the education that we got through the training, you know, from the other investors and from the different programs, you start to look at things like, okay, well, how are you going to market that product? How are you going to get to your customers? Who are your existing connections right now? Uh, and the things that, you know, seem very simple on the surface, but when you start digging down into it, um, you can see where different companies are through their level of formation. Um, and it's not just, you know, do the founders um, have those ideas, but you're also looking for, you know, do you think that they have the capability to do that? Um, one of the questions I know we go through it every year when we do AngelCon um, is, okay, you know, well, um, how much money is this company going to make or what's the return going to be? But really, that's hard to tell, you know, when people say, you know, how do you value a startup company? I always say it's kind of like, yeah. Yes, That's exactly. It. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it really comes down to: Do you have faith in the the founders, and have they demonstrated, you know, that they they've been able to think through the problems, that they're logical, and that they can stick with it? I had another friend that started a company um, as well that did really well, and we were talking about it, and she said, you know, if I knew ahead of time how hard it was going to be, I wouldn't go through doing this company. Hey, and, just, <laughs> <laughs> but but that's what you know you look for in the founders is is you know do these people have the ability to get through those problems and pass them and that is i think one of the true indicators oh 100 like I, I always get asked like what you know what what are the you know you've seen so many startups you work with so many, you know what are the qualities and a number one resilience like without any doubt because it, it is so hard and if you can't get through that uh it's it, it's just not going to happen yeah yeah um, and also true, right? The products, like you fall in love with that idea and you learn to hang on. We, I think from experience too, we learn that that product's going to change. It will definitely not be that product. We know, you know, when, when the startup is first launching, there's going to be so many iterations, changes, pivots. It's, it's, you're truly investing in that founder and their capacity to execute on, on, and to, to process data and make whatever changes they need along the way to keep going. Yeah. Yeah. What about what about you, Kyle? How uh, so? Is was it has been one year or two years? Uh, this second. second year starting out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in that year, what, what were some of the big takeaways? Um, I was impressed a little bit with uh, teams. Uh, the next era team was super impressive. Uh, in some of the things that I've done, it's really a founder and a team that they cobbled together to maybe get an investment or win the, the competition that they're in. Um, but I think with this program and having it tied to Cal Poly a bit is that these teams might have worked together for a few years, even prior to this, which I think is a really good thing. And, and it showed in the two teams we invested in, I think, that mm -hmm. they had already had prior experience, at least going, you know, being in the community and going to school Support together, and, and yeah. supporting, getting supported by the community that they're a little bit farther along than a typical early stage startup investment. So that was really interesting to see. Yeah, yeah. No, thank you. Um, so any, uh, what have you observed as far as, uh, trends in the community and startups? Have you, um, uh, Mitch, you've been involved a bit longer. Sometimes we, we see an evolution in the types of startups that we see, uh, and, and what are you more personally interested in as far as investment from, uh, from your perspective? Yeah. Um, you know, it's interesting. I think, you know, one of the years we had like a lot of, um, ag uh, ag yes. tech companies and yeah. you know the year we had a lot of like med tech companies and it's interesting um because those are areas that i have very little experience in you know agriculture and medical but it's it's super cool because you get to learn the aspects of that and working again with the other investors we've always had other investors that 
have some background in those industries. So you start to learn how to look at companies in different industries. Um, you know, even with Nextera um, and Penny Lane, I don't know anything about collecting trash other than, you know, I put my buckets out on the street and it disappears. Um, but you start to see, you know, what goes on through that whole process of there. And you're like, okay, wow, there is, there's a lot that's, that goes into that. And my personal background, I tend to be more interested in um, technology. Uh, and I like to see how technology can solve a variety of problems that I never would have thought of in the past. So that's kind of the super cool thing about it. I mean, part of being an entrepreneur is going out and finding problems and solutions to them, but you've got to be able to recognize those problems first, you know, and different people with different eyes and different backgrounds can see different things that I can't. So mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. you know, interesting to get that exposure. Yeah. Yeah. And what, Kai, what about you for, um, when going through the due diligence process, uh, what were the things that you focused on? What were the surprises, maybe companies that you thought, uh, you know, potentially that you were less interested in, but doing the diligence, you realized there's something there, vice versa, that you were maybe excited about, but doing the due diligence, uh, what were the, the gaps and the cracks and anything that came out from that first experience? Uh, I think to this point, the uh, problems that are a lot bigger than we expected them to be, like next era being one of them, uh, was really interesting to me. Um, and, you know, all six groups had were solving problems that were bigger than I think we all expected to begin with. Um, and then, uh, you know, it's, I think to me, it's team uh, taking tools that are. About, tools that we hear about like AI and applying them to these problems that uh, are going to continue the problems are going to continue to grow and the solutions are going to continue to help as that uh, as that issue gets bigger and bigger so if there's a problem that can be solved with things that are out about software or AI mm -hmm. or whatever it is I think that's that's interesting for us to look at and interesting for any of us to look at yeah yeah do you want to um so, well, so one question to you, Mitch, too, because for uh, the call to action here is a little bit about, you know, sharing the experience, but also, um, you know, engaging investors to, or people to potentially engage the investors in future funds. You've done it for four years. You're doing it again. Uh, what's the appeal to you of, of coming back each year? So that's a good question. Um, you know, my, the personal appeal for me is a few years ago, I thought of starting another company and I remember everything that I went through with mine and I'm like, I don't want to go through all of that again. Um, but being in a program like this, I get to be involved in that environment, in that entrepreneurial spirit, but without all the responsibility of running and starting a company. Um, and and I love that, you know, because I, I can still be surrounded by people who have that entrepreneurial spirit, who are looking at new ways to solve problems. And you do get to have some input to that process. You know, you do get to see what's happening. So I still feel like I'm in touch with that world. Um but without having the day-to-day, -day, you know, eight, right. 15 hour days of a uh, startup yeah. of being a founder. So that's, uh, at least for me, is one of the, the nice things about it. Yeah, yeah. I think for me, it's just keeping aware of what's going on and yeah. tuning out, moving on to the next thing and sticking around to hear how these teams continue. And, yeah. Um, some of the previous teams that have passed through some are just being in the loop and, and, and what, what, about what's going on. Yeah, having a pulse on, what, on what's yeah. going on. Um, any, any questions from anyone? Yeah. Yes, yes. I'll... Thank you. Okay. So I've, I've lived in Startupville. I've worked for startups for 40 years. I've mentored probably 100. So I'm wondering, the entrepreneurs here, if I'm an entrepreneur and I think I got a great idea, why wouldn't I go right up 101, two and a half hours, and I'm in San Jose, right there in the heartbeat of Silicon Valley. That's where all the investors are. That's where I can make connections with angels, with engineers, the, the, the whole ecosystem. Why, why would I want to invest in these companies when I know gazillions of people from around the world yeah, yeah. I have, are going to Silicon Valley? Well, I have a good answer, <laughs> but I'll, I'll let Mitch and Kyle give it, give it a shot. So I think, um, you know, Penny Lane said it great uh, at the beginning, you know, there's a very welcoming spirit through AngelCon. It feels more connected to community. Um, you know, from the investor perspective, sorry, from the startup perspective, um, I think they get kind of a, not just 
the competition for you know winning an investment, but they also get the guidance. Um, so I think a lot of the due diligence teams, they're local people who truly are invested, who, who truly are interested in investing back in our community and local people. Um, from the investor perspective, you know you feel like you're fostering that environment here close to home. So yeah, there are a lot of companies up in the Bay Area, and that's you know where I grew up and where I where I did a lot of it before, but you also tend to feel um, a little bit less individual in that particular environment as well. And I think the AngelCon is something that, you know, in this area provides that individuality both to the startup company and to the investor. Yeah, I was going to say that there's just less noise here uh, and that helps everyone involved in the process, right? There's just the, the quality bubbles up more easily. Uh, because there's less noise, less there are less startups. So the ones that are interesting bubble up fast. And we can give them that full individual support where um, I, I've heard of companies, Tally4 was one of our winners last year, and they're, they're based in the Bay Area. Um, and they kept saying, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm totally tooting our horn here, but... <laughs> <laughs> But basically, they, they kept saying, like, wow, we've gotten so much attention and so much support from San Luis Obispo County that that we're begging to get in the Bay Area, but we're, it's just so hard to get anyone's attention up there. Whereas here, it was once the limelight was on them, they, they had a phenomenal software product. Everyone was excited about it, and everyone was just bending over backwards to, to support them and help them, uh, and we invested in them, too. So... Um, but, and last but not least, sorry, Kyle, I'll, I'll let you also answer, but because <laughs> this is something that's so, um, uh, that I feel so passionate about, which is why we're doing the work we're doing here. Uh, that being said, one doesn't exclude the other. So you get all this great attention here, but it doesn't mean that you shouldn't go to Sand Hill and, uh, you know, Penny is participating in, in an accelerator in Sacramento and we encourage that. Uh, we've had companies in our incubator program. It's a two-year program, but while they're in here, they're also going to tech stars in Chicago or uh, and like, yeah, just max out whatever you, resources you can tap into. Um, and but and we're along with you for that whole journey uh, for for a long time. Uh, once the startups graduate from the incubator program, they remain SBDC clients with our SBD center, and they keep getting mentored and helped and so on. Yeah, yeah. Kyle, do you have another a perspective too on that, on on here versus there? Yeah, so I was part of um, Top Global in this startup community group that was always looking at Brad Feld's book about startup communities. There are hundreds of areas doing this in the US and Canada and all over the world that are small communities. And you don't realize how much talent and how much support and how much capital is in your community until you dive in and start doing it. We are in an incredible position from you know, from Ventura to, to Paso Robles of people that have done their thing in the Bay or done their thing on the East Coast and left and came here and started something else or just grew out of UCSB or Cal Poly and built globally uh, amazing companies that have expanded all over the world and, and raised all kinds of capital and have all the experience and they're easy to get to and they want to help others in their community. So I think it's easier, like Judy said, to get attention from um, the experts in your community uh, here get that dialed in, get your network, build your mentorship, build your team. And then when you're ready to go, you can always drive up the road and go try to find some more money. Yeah. But a uh, good question. Really good question. Um, any other questions in the audience? Um, <clears throat> anything else that you want to share about the the, the AngelCon experience uh, that we haven't touched on? Is... I was, so I, I taught a little bit as well. I was just really impressed with the team and organization and the, the week, not weekly, monthly calls of learning. So um, the, the- We didn't the pay him. <laughs> does a really good job laying out the process and laying out the materials. And going back to your point about due diligence, there's a very structured due diligence process that you can use if you want, or you don't have to if you don't want to, uh, but it's all there. And it's a really great way to learn the process. And they've spent a lot of time putting together the structure, which I found really helpful, um, especially having put together structures for other startup programs was, was really well done. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, I think there's, you know, three main pieces to the program that I really like. And the first one is, you know, a sense of community. Um, if you have that entrepreneurial spirit or that investor spirit, it's a good introduction to other people in the local area that have, you know, similar interests. Um, you know, I've mm. built some 
good friendships out of the program. Um, you know, the second thing is that for me, at least is for that giving back. Um, it's, you know, a way to stay in touch with the local uh, startups to feel like I can provide some influence, and some guidance and direction, as well as a little bit of capital. Um, and it's a relatively small investment, you know, for AngelCon compared to other um, seed investments. Uh, and then, you know, the third one is, you know, a potential return. Um, so, you know, you do get to look at the companies, you learn a lot about it, uh, you learn a lot about the process, um, and then you maybe make a return in the end. You know, that's, yeah. I think, the bottom line, you know, why a lot of, why any investor gets into it, really. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Mitch. Thank you. Um, okay. Well, thank you so much. And thank you for participating in AngelCon. Thank you for being here this morning. Thank you for all your support. Um, and, and yeah, to, to close that loop, it's uh, without you guys as investors and participating in this, uh, you know, we wouldn't have the startup community that we have in Slow. So thank you so much for being involved. Yeah, really, thank you. Um, so for more information, we have the QR code here for anyone who's interest, interested in participating as, a, as an investor. Uh, we'll have a call for startups to apply come uh, December, end of December, early January. Um, we have an investor meeting Friday, September 27th. Um, like I said, they're typically on the last Friday of every month, give or take, <laughs> uh, 9 to 11. Um, the second meeting, we'll talk about our investment thesis. This is actually kind of interesting. Every year, we kind of open it up to the investor group gets to decide what type of, what startup would qualify for an investment. And so is it going to be a geographic limitation? Is it going to be does it have to be mission driven? Does it have to? So we have that conversation. It's a great conversation. Um, and at the end of the day, uh, you know, it, it is interesting. Some investors do participate in it with a more philanthropic mindset of, I just want to support young founders locally. That's all that matters to me. Uh, and then you have the other side of the spectrum, right, where the investors are I mean, investors tend to be a little bit competitive <laughs> uh, as part of the personality makeup um, where like, well, you know, we want an ROI. Uh, let's try and make this, you know, actually uh, uh, come full circle. But uh, it's always a great debate, great conversation. So that'll happen on October 18th. I think that's it for slides. Um, yes, Mike. So when do you actually have to commit and when do you write a check to be part of it today yeah. <laughs> <laughs> take, take that note i mean when, you know strike while the iron's hot uh <laughs> no th there is uh if you fill out the application then uh the team will get back to you with all the details okay but typically we do try to make sure we get all our checks by the end of the year at the latest um we do set up the llc for the fund uh, the first week of January, we wait for January. The only reason we wait to do that is to avoid the franchise tax for this year. So it allows us to save 800 bucks. Um, and yeah, and that's it. Yeah, okay. so, sorry. And Liz, Liz is the, for all the details. Liz Fisher, assistant director. Uh, the deadline for applications, if you wanna vote on the top 12 startups is you need to have your application by January 15th. Um, if you are not ready yet and you want to wait, um, we do open up a second deadline of February 21st, and that's to vote on the top six startups. And then after that, we'll have checks due. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I think we had one more slide. So we, uh, th this was, oh yeah, this was last, this year, this year. So, oh, that was a team. Sorry. I was like, <laughs> which startups are those? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it, it's, it's a super fun process. Uh, don't hesitate to ask us questions. Um, and right. And then we'll, we're going to close up on coffee and conversation, but please feel free to stay and network and talk and catch up with, uh, ask questions directly to Mitch and Kyle, if you guys don't mind hanging out for a few and, uh, thank you very much for coming this morning. Really appreciate it. And thank you to those of you who, um, were online. Thank you. <laughs>